quick note apologies in advance i don't know what happened brandon's audio is bad sorry guys yo what is up you have found we like the blazers i am your horse ryan witty whitledge You're and the man my horse i am your horse that He's is how excited i am to my michaela andrews He's he's pointing. All right, keep going. Brandon, Blazers basketball is officially upon us. The season has started. The games mean things. We can officially prognosticate and pontificate and postulate about all things happening with this team. Three games into it, and uh, we're just going to say right now the Kings are playing tonight. This game won't be up before that game, so we're not going to reference that game. So whatever happens in it, uh, just disregard Blazers anything that we say. That... By the way, really I quick on that. Not. I hope to God not. We're only so fast. The Kings are, in fact, 0-7 through preseason and the regular season. So the Kings will be looking for their first win. Nope. Regular season has started. All of the preseason stuff is out. All then the preseason stuff. Two, I, but I'm just saying the Blazers beat them in the preseason. And so anyways, that is happening tonight. We're not going to get to it. Ryan, how are you? I am doing fantastic. Uh, we will be getting back to a little bit more of a regular recording schedule. Uh, I think we're thinking of going up to weekly now that the season has started. We'll see. I do know that me for oh, no. personal reasons. Oh, no. I don't think I know. We're locked in. We've got all that ad sponsor money, Ryan. We've got... <laughs> Harry's and we've got, you know, Gillette and well, anything else that you can use to shave your nethers. They're sponsoring well, this. I don't know, but we're weekly. Well, Brandon, I think you are going to have to use uh, notebook LM for next week's episode. As you know, I will be out of town. I will be attending some, uh, some family matters in, in Minnesota. So you may just Fair. have to dump, dump in some blazer's edge recaps that you write, uh, to get a full on 40 some odd minute podcast summary that you can say, please just generate this between two individuals. I sent you a link for this to research earlier. I did let going into I that blind. I, I, what did you think? And can you break it down the best you can? We're just going to touch on this for sure. a couple minutes because it's going to put us out of business. We're going to lose all that sweet, sweet free time of podcasting that we do. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not going to go out of business, Ryan. The human voice reigns supreme. No AI can generate this, can it? Uh, Notebook LM is a process that's owned by Google. It started as something else, and now Google took it over. And it's it's simple. Here's what it is. You upload your documents. It could be a PDF. It could be a Word document. You can even upload, M- upload MP3s. You upload it into your notebook, and then it uses advanced AI, something, something, something. It creates summaries for you, Ryan. But the the trick to this is it doesn't just create written summaries. To your point, it can create a podcast with two distinct hosts. And to your point, it is a little bit creepy, uncanny valley that the hosts are, you know, using pauses. Oh, and ums and likes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh Hmm. They're... There yeah. is a oh, wow, woo. and it's there is yeah, a pod- so that's, that's there's, the, there's a podcast that I listen to. It's offline. Uh, it's by Crooked Media. Um, John Favreau and Max Fisher host that, and this is how it came to my attention today because one of the hosts dumped his book into it, and he said, "Please give me a a thirty minute podcast summary of my book." He goes, "I may have been listening to." you know, just two random people who have read my book talk. Here's a snippet of it, you know, and just, he ended up dumping in other books, getting summaries, getting all this stuff. And he's like, like, this is, how do you distinguish it? If I didn't tell you that this was, I dumped in a PDF and I just made the world's most basic request, which is part of how this has come about is that, you know, chat GPT in order to get certain things or, or open AI, you have, you have to be very specific with your prompts. So just dumping in a PDF file and saying, can you give me a 30 minute audio summary of two people discussing this? And then five minutes later, you have exactly that is weird and creepy. Like, just think about the fact that like this podcast could be completely replaced by dumping in game summaries from like ESPN. People 
don't want to listen to robots. Why? Because there's something just a little bit off about it. The way I, distri- I described it to Cassie was that if I had heard, if I were walking through the room and I heard someone listening to this, be like, oh, they're listening to a podcast. If you mm-hmm. listen for more than 10 seconds, you're like, something's not quite right here. It's very powerful. It's very cool. Kids in high school and college are absolutely going to be abusing this technology. They already are. Oh, God, yes. And not just for the podcast stuff, for the summaries, right? And here's my uh, my problem with it. Let me let me get out my old man yells at cloud picture now, Ryan. The problem I have with it is that something that's really interesting and cool about being a human is that you can make connections between things in really new and interesting ways using your lived experience, your perspective, your life. It can be impacted by what you ate for breakfast this morning, Ryan. If you have diarrhea, the synapses that you're connecting will be different than if your stool is hard, right? We all know that. And what AI is now doing is that it is shortcutting that process and you're basically telling it, hey, I want you to take this information and create the connections between, right? And so if you're, let's say, a high school student, and it's not just about summarize Huckleberry Finn, it's how does Huckleberry Finn and the lessons that it teaches relate to contemporary America and also the civil rights movement in the 1960s? And that's stuff that when you're in school, you're supposed to be learning, right, about these different things, learning about today, learning about the civil rights era, and learning about this book that you're reading. And the teacher's like, hey, use your unique brain and make the connection between. Well, now we're letting AI generate that on our behalf. I do think this is going to impact people's critical thinking, much in the same way as computers have reduced the need for people to have really tight memories and, like, Mm -hmm. really strong recall uh, look no farther than all of our teachers growing up say, what are you going to do? Carry a calculator in your pocket everywhere you go? And the answer is yes. So th- what we have now done is so even now this upper level of creativity and thought, we're now kind of off gassing to computers. And look, I'm not saying this isn't useful and powerful. Of course it is. I can think of, you know, 10 different things in my work right now that I could use this technology for would be very helpful. But then I'm not able to do it. And if I don't do it for long enough, then I'll no longer be able to do it ever. And then I'm Mm. walking around like one of the people in Wally, not even walking, but in a little (laughs) floaty thing with my screen. So that's where we're heading, Ryan. Floaty thing with the screen in front of it, drinking your pot. I am pro floaty chair. Those things look comfy as shit in that movie. So uh, (laughs) people who are not on floating chairs... Where are the Portland Trailblazers this week? Segway? Uh, you give Great that thumbs segue. up, thumbs Let's down. Talk about this ne- team ne- that we both know and love. I don't know why you got us started on this notebook thing. Anyway, it is cool. Uh, it's it's just fascinating. I love the idea that if we aren't able to podcast, if I can train it to our voices and we can just like both of us are busy no, and we can dump in a recap. Is, <laughs> the whole point is that we come here both tired, frustrated, and annoyed with whatever things have happened in our life. And we come in and we take it out on the audience. That's what they're here. How, how why we get the sponsorship from Harry's Ryan. How long until we can train the language model to just constantly want to fire Chauncey Billups? I think it'll it take, take like a day, an episode. Probably. I think we can get that uh, thing okay. going. Like By the way, okay. So, uh, all of the all of the fire Chauncey people now want to fire him for a different reason, Ryan, because the Blazers won a game. Oh my God, the Blazers are now one yeah, and two. Oh, yeah, this I'm I'm, so, I'm 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 on that train. I will say, <laughs> just going back. So season opened last Wednesday. Portland versus Golden State. Um, I I hosted a little bit of a watch party at my house, had a couple people over. Uh, I will say that that was a very entertaining game for a quarter and a half. And after about that, uh, we all ended up playing a card game and the game was just on in the background. I was very nervous for the season that because I maintain I want as many losses as possible. I was carrying the flag for let's go ON82. Uh, I'm sad that that I already have to put down that flag, retire it, but mm. give me entertaining losses. I am I am a person who is not who you lost a lot of my interest last year. Uh, I think a lot of fans lost interest last year based off the television viewership numbers and and engagement and and all that stuff. So if we were looking at which I also thought was cute originally a 139 to 104 loss that the league changed to nay 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 we're going to say you lost by 36 because this free throw that didn't get counted we're going to add that in 
a 140 to 104 loss. I could not put up with that for a full season. You would have had to find a new co-host. I would have tapped out very quickly. Going into Friday's game, a, a 105 to 103 loss to the Pelicans. That is the type of entertaining loss I need. You keep me entertained until the last minute, and then you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. I am on board with this. Let's go. Ryan Whitledge wants you to blow as many double-digit third-quarter leads as you possibly can. Absolutely. I went on the app formerly known as Twitter when people were like, fire Chauncey. I can't believe he blew this. You know, after game one, I kind of understand because his post game press conference sounded like it was 20 games into the season and they were getting their ass kicked after game one. But after game two, when there's still the fire, I'm like, no, this coach understood the assignment. I want entertaining losses and I want them all. And so then seeing last night, a 22 point win, I have never been more disappointed in a win in the, in my Blazers fandom in my life. Brandon walk me through your feelings through these first three games. The Blazers find themselves at one and two. And again, uh, as Ryan just said, how we got there also repeating that we're not going to get to the Kings Blazers game uh, by recording. I'm on the East coast. Sorry, everybody. My thoughts are the Blazers are trying to play faster. That's great. We see the Blazers are playing faster than they did last year. That's great. Uh, I think they're now 10th in the league uh, in pace, uh, which is just behind the Sacramento Kings, by the way, who are six. Now, here's the thing. So, so first part, how am I feeling? I like that the Blazers are playing faster. They have young people. The Blazers are taller, bigger, longer, younger, play fast. They say they're going to do it every year. They're finally doing it. I think that's interesting. I'm with you. I wish they'd lose every game. But anyway, so that... 10th in pace. Uh, here's the problem. The Blazers are unfortunately 20th in fast break points. Sacramento Kings are first. Sacramento Kings yeah, are running, running fast, running fast, but looking like baby deer who just got their legs underneath them. Not so good. Running fast doesn't necessarily mean that something good happens from it. So the way that I'm feeling is this, Ryan. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Jeremy Grant uh, balling out, averaging 26 points a game. I believe that Blazers PR said that Jeremy Grant was the first blazer uh or sorry that he joins brandon roy damian lillard and cj mccollum is the only blazer to score 26 points a game in the first three games of the season so here's what i'm thinking jeremy grant showcase yourself get us those two first round picks mr grant be the number Perfect. one option i love the offense running through him i love it it's great i i so twist i don't know i like him scoring a lot i like him looking like he's useful to another team i don't know if i like the offense running through through him a because he has a tendency to take bad shots and try to heat check himself which if i'm another team i'm like that's not the guy i want on my team uh and b it's blocking those shots from other people who should be getting them even if jeremy grant's still on the team they need to be developing young people so all to say ryan how i'm feeling right now the blazers are one and two they're facing a sacramento kings team that has lost all the preseason games all the regular season games uh you know they just added demar Derozan and they don't play any defense i think the Blazers actually have a pretty good chance of knocking them off tonight if they weren't on the second night of the back to back. I swear to God, if we, if we end up if we end up two and two, I'm I'm in a riot. I'm in a riot. No, you know we meet listen, down. It's we, so early we, though. It's so early. No, no we can't. Somewhere. We, not two this early. I was going to give like <laughs> two in the first month of the season. I can't do two in the first week. I think it. Listen, capture the flag. Come, capture the flag. Wins come, wins go. Sometimes they happen in the most unexpected ways. I'm not feeling so bad that they won against the Pelicans. The Pelicans don't look good, by the way. Um, oh, God, and no. they also don't have a center at all. And I mean, part of Donovan Klingon do- dominating was that there was no one to stop him at all. Um, wait, so, okay. Those are how, did, how, did you, how did you feel watching Zion Williamson directly attack Donovan Klingon? And Donovan Klingon just being like, ha ha, that's cute, Wait, little man. Here's my impression of Don- Donovan Klingon as he meets Zion Williamson. Ready? Whip, ready? Sure. It was great for the audio only medium. 
And he just swallows him. Just, just swallow. I mean, you see, where did my chair go? You can see that Donovan <laughs> Klingon just absolutely swallows up Zion, who's a human mm. bowling ball. Zion, who is a physical specimen, the likes we haven't seen. And Donovan Klingon, he comes in like a flying spider and just absolutely encaps it. This dude was in jail. Like, it's unreal. Like, let's talk about Donovan Klingon, Ryan. Like, like, how stoked are you? Like, watching this dude play, hat tip to Danny Morang saying that Donovan Klingon has a 9.1% block rate, which is uh, like Manute Bull, Alonzo Mourning, Victor Webin Yama mm-hmm. level block rate. I mean, what, like, what's, <laughs> what are you thinking about this kid? It's three games. It's early sample size. What do you think? It, it, it is three games. It's small sample size. I will say, after. Going back the the previous two seasons drafts where we had Scoot Henderson and we were promised a lot and I don't feel as though a lot was delivered on in the beginning of the year <laughs> and before that Shaden Sharp we saw flashes but it was inconsistent you could tell that he didn't have that kind of high level competition experience so it was a lot of hype seeing the Blazers have a player that had hype had name recognition, had a lot of pundits saying, I can't believe he fell to them in the draft. And then seeing that player perform, that starts to fill me with a lot of hope of the Blazers draft and scouting process moving forward. I think we can all agree that like looking back the, as as much as we may like, Shaden Sharp, and that we may see that hope and see that potential. He was the draft pick that was like right on the, it was right on the edge. That was, that was, you know, the, the Neil O'Shea to the uh, Joe Cronin era. That's that draft pick. Scoot Henderson was the swing big first one of Joe Cronin. Now we're settling into things and we can see the the potential of what this organization can can scout and possibly take in their selections. And it makes me feel a lot more confident in their stuff going forward. I also do like the fact that we have now kind of diversified our last three draft picks. We we have we have a guard. We have somebody who could be a small forward. I will let you in here in a second. Damn it. We have a guard. We have somebody who could reasonably play small forward and a center. That is a great scattershot of talent throughout the roster that that you would want to build something with. Brandon, go. Also, each of those picks was best player available, so that's great. Um, it's not like they were just like picking by position. It just it worked out that way. Mm-hmm. Ryan, let me ask you a question one more about Donovan Klingon, because by the way, like stats aren't jumping off the page. Five points, 5.7 rebounds, 2.3 blocks, but then you look, Ryan, the dude's playing 13 minutes a night. Holy yeah, shit. I was, I, I was like, going to say he's playing a quarter of basketball a game. It couldn't. It, he couldn't be more efficient in his role if he wanted to be. So, Ryan, I want. I have, I have a question for you, and then I have maybe my worst take that I've ever had in the 101 episodes of We Like the Blazers. But let me ask you this question first, Ryan. I am. I am excited for this take because you have had some doozies. It's, it's, this is going to be a really. Even if it's going to be an accurate take, it's going to be truly my worst take ever. But I, I okay. want you to answer this question first. When it comes to Donovan Klingon, Ryan, it's only three games, but he should start. Okay, say more about that. DeAndre Ayton for his pedigree for uh, I I feel as though DeAndre Ayton seeing what I'm seeing and I and I know that he is leading in rebounds through all three games Golden State eleven rebounds uh, the New Orleans games he had he had fifteen or he had fifteen rebounds first game twelve rebounds second game he's playing out of position he's forcing shots he's kind of like I don't know just to simplify it you know we're seeing some lack 
lackadaisical play at the rim. Chauncey Billups just in this last post game had to say that DeAndre Ayton had to make most of his by or most of his points and most of his impact by being reminded to attack the rim. I don't think a thirty million dollar a year player uh, who's had this many years in the league <sighs> should be having those we don't kind need of to nights. Bring up his salary again. I told people his to salary comments comparison his is the sal- thief of joy. Never compare Ayton to his contract. No. I will forever. I will forever compare a player to his contract because sports. I'm not going to lie is a, what have you done for me lately? And he was paid for what he had done previously, but I I don't think the what you got to the contract stuff. It's just, but I don't think his contract. Okay. So if we can't do anything, okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. In this case, let me, let let, let me, let me flip this question back on you. Donovan Klingon. What about my terrible team? DeAndre? No, no, no. Don, uh, we'll get to that. But See, AI first, can't do I, this, I, Ryan. <laughs> this is why I you're want your terrible AI answer. AI DeAndre, DeAndre Ayton, Donovan <laughs> Klingon. Same contract. They're being paid $10 a game. Let's just say that. Who are you starting? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. That's a Don, cop Don, out. Klingon you know, three games is to his career. He's 20 years old. Like Don that's Ray fine. Been in and he has sh- and he has shown great instinct, great skill, great body control. He has shown all of the things that you and I, and the I things that he, the the things that he has shown that he needs to, or that that he's shown that he needs to work on is only going to come with in-game experience. And I think that what you need to do in this type of season that the Blazers are hoping to have in which wins are not the ultimate goal is to parrot something you have said plenty of times before is develop the young talent. So let the young it's, talent, I let agree. the young talent play through their bad skills and learn the good skills. Of course, I think, like- I think when we reach the 20 game mark, if this kind of stuff continues with Clingham's efficiency and performance unquestionably, and I don't care if Deandre Ayton is untradeable, he needs to not be the starter, and you need to let Klingon go. Uh, okay, I'm fine. sorry. You need to let Klingon go on the court, not yeah, in no, general. I, I, but, I, knew, yeah. I knew you meant. I knew you meant. I, I'm fine with saying, hey, if in like a, a month and a half, if Donovan Klingon is still playing like this, then yes, he is ready to start. It's been three games. Let's. It's been three games. Two of them have been against a team that didn't have a center. Uh, they so had a Zion. They had a Zion, but he's not a center. So we're, I mean, it's going to be interesting actually tonight against Sacramento. How many, Um, how many centers has Zion abused in his career? How many ESPN top 10 highlights have we seen of Zion Williamson using his linebacker frame to just absolutely embarrass people? The fact that we had two games back to back where Donovan Klingon was not embarrassed by Zion Williamson, I do think is a very good sign. Smallest of small sample sizes, but it's a very good fucking sign. He plays a center. Like even, even is is your measuring stick now going to be wimby? No, but like, okay, thank God. Cause if your measuring stick is wimby, you uh, break that thing by a new one. Fine. But even, yeah. So all I'm saying is like, let's just pump our brakes a little bit. But to that point, your take is a good one. I like it. It's been three games. He should be starting. I think it, I, it's a fine take. I think it's fine. I think if he started tonight, I don't think anyone would be really that upset about it. But Ryan, I did want to share my take. Okay. And it brings me no joy whatsoever to offer my opinion here. It's just a thought that I had in my head. And again, oh AI God. can't generate this, Ryan. Are you saying John C. Billups needs a contract extension? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'm, saying. <laughs> I'm looking at Donovan Klingon. I'm looking at his defensive potential and I'm looking at his defensive impact. Mm-hmm. Ryan, what I'm telling you is the Blazers have not had a defensive center on the roster like this since Greg Oden. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm that's not horrible. What do you think? That's not think? it's not horrible. I that Greg but, but Greg Oden is I mean, Greg like you're Oden not is allowed not, to make that comparison though for all obvious no, reasons. I, I I think you're allowed to make that comparison. The comparison I was really worried you were getting to go down the road of was Sabonis. <laughs> No. I I thought uh, I, I thought you were gonna go. I thought you were gonna go with an Arvita Sabonis comparison. No, no. I, I d- d- there's they're different players, but I mean we're talking just like 
defensive. I mean, so are Klingon and Odin. I know oh, breaking news. They're different people. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure both Greg and Donovan appreciate that. I acknowledge that they're two separate entities. Yeah. The defensive potential of Donovan Klingon we haven't seen since Greg Odin. And here's the thing with Donovan Klingon. R.I.P.'s Klingon's knees when he blows them out tonight. Thank you, Brandon. No, uh, absolutely not. Donovan Klingon is bigger than Greg Oden, which is really weird to think because when Greg Oden came to the Blazers, it's like, this dude's enormous. He, when he first got there, he was pretty trim too. Uh, and actually even like, think, I feel like his last season of the Blazers, he cut down quite a bit of weight to as part of his rehab. But at any rate, Donovan Klingon is a big dude. He's tall. He's really tall. Mm-hmm. He's really long. He's mobile. He's thick. He's like a very <laughs> NBA body ready 20 year old. And Brian, I'm <laughs> is just he saying, down again? the friction on with how long i don't know what he's that big means. he's long down to get the friction on it's I'm a song reference come to on because i don't know what it means and it sounds disgusting all i'm saying is that it's I mean, like in that song context yes my it's only three games but the blazers have an all defensive center on their roster that's what they have so again it's a hot take it's an early take it's three games but the way he moves his instinct. And also one more thing about Donovan Klingon, like we talk about like defense is not something that comes quickly to NBA players. You often need years of reading and reacting and learning and film and being in position and and, and playing the games in order to understand the speed at which the NBA operates and to get yourself in the right position. He's already having this impact when he's literally a rookie, like, very, mm-hmm. very impressive stuff from Donovan Klingon. It's pretty cool. The stats don't do him justice, and the stats are, are quite good. So, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, no, I I agree. It's I'm the rest of the roster is where I'm massively conflicted by. Um, I'm glad to see that so far this year they have decided to test it out, sink or swim, scoots the number one point guard and we're going to run ant off the ball as long as Shaden sharp isn't there. And we're going to see how this duo works. Um, obviously to start the year, knowing that sharp is out for as long as he is nobody liked that, but this kind of forces the team to make a decision on a set of players that we've been talking about since middle of last year. Yeah. I love it. Um, <clears throat> First game left a lot to be desired from Ant. He wasn't able to capitalize a lot off the ball. Um, I think he's done a little better these last two games. Uh, mm-hmm. Scoot, I am starting to lean in that. I think he may, I'm not going to say bust, but I don't think he has superstar potential. I'm starting <sighs> to lean in that he, he, he can be a solid table setter. You know, it's, it, it, if you put the right pieces around him, I think he can flourish. The pieces that the Blazers currently have around him, I don't. But I don't know, man. Like he's, uh, he's, uh, here's a here's a random question for you. He's much better than he was you, last year, even if people don't want to admit that. He's much better. I, I, I will give you that. I will give you that. You can tell that he has put in the work. I think he needs to put the goggles back on so that we can get goggle scoot. I liked goggle scoot a, a lot better than non-goggle scoot. I saw your eye roll. I, I acknowledge your eye roll. Here's the thing. Do Would your impression feelings about scoot, would they be different if the acquisition of Scoot did not lead to the departure of a franchise icon. Do do you think that we will ever be able, or that the fan base will ever be able to separate Scoot Henderson from Damian Lillard? Yeah, because I'm a fan and I don't connect those two things at all. Like it was clear where the Blazers but, were so heading. like So like if, if midway through this year, suddenly like the Blazers just traded scoot henderson they realize it's not going to work out they trade him for a late first round pick are you livid that would be deranged i mean you're 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 not going to trade but is it dr- but is it is it deranged because i can't believe you traded uh, a third round pick from two years ago 
for such a late pick now, why couldn't you get a better return on it? Or is it deranged because you do tie it in your head to the leaving of Damian Lillard? I, I don't currently tie it in my head to the leaving of Damian Lillard. The franchise picked a direction and they picked, we are not going to be able to contend with Damian Lillard. I think they made the right assessment. They didn't have the pieces. They didn't have the financial flexibility. They didn't have the trade pieces. They didn't have the assets to make a trade that would make this team with Damian Lillard a contender. We can see what's happening in Milwaukee right now and say, hey, like, are the Blazers, if they had chosen to continue building around Dame, better than Milwaukee? No. So they made the correct choice. Now, it so happened that Scoot Henderson was the player who was there at three, and they made the pick. I think that's completely fine. So I don't connect Scoot and Dame at all. Like, I always found okay. the connection to be a bit tenuous. Um, here's what I'll say about Scoot Henderson, now the player. Uh, Scoot Henderson, the player, is coming off the bench. Scoot Henderson, the player, is playing against lesser competition, but also with lesser competition. Scoot Henderson, the player, is substantively better than he was last year. Maybe he's not playing statistically quite as well as he was at the very end of last year, uh, but he is better. He still has tons of ways in which he can get better and improve, but here's the one thing I have seen that I can't find in the stats, but that the eye test tells me, Ryan that he's able to use his speed better and it's not just straight line or I'm just going to go in a straight line, go to the basket. Uh, but he's also able to change direction and to finish. And we're back. Not quite sure what happened, but my point was Scoot Henderson using his speed, not just downhill speed. It's more change of direction. He's more patient and his finishing at the rim has gotten better. Again, this is not something that I'm able to pull out of the stats here, although it should be. How can I get there? I'd love to be able to stall just long enough in order to see. I think basketball reference does field goal percentage by distance um yeah the stats are actually not going to bear that out ryan but i did actually check advanced stats earlier today that scoot henderson is among the league leaders at contested shots at the rim so you could argue that one of two ways one you could say that's bad that scoot henderson when he drives is going into such heavy traffic that his shots end up being contested. But the other way to look at that is that, yo, Scoot Henderson is not only is he fearless, he's able to generate tough looks, which when he gets more savvy, Ryan, remember how did Damian Lillard manufacture like half of his offense? Drawing fouls, drawing bullshit fouls. If Scoot Henderson can use his speed and use his patience and his change, change of pace and get to the rim for those contested shots, he's finishing them slightly better, at least to my eye. And then if he's able to draw those bullshit fouls, he's going to be more than fine. So that's, that's my Scoot Henderson take. I, I, and I agree with that. Like, I mean, (sighs) For better or worse, he got a lot of Russell Westbrook comparisons coming into the league and and especially in his first year, because it was very much a bull in a China shop. Put your head down, run towards the rim, make a decision. But, you know, with his youth in his rookie season, it was was that a good decision? Was that a bad decision? Part of learning this league now is also figuring out is it the right time to to force the issue to draw contact or to suck in defenders and kick out and what's the right pass and i i through these three games i have seen a little bit better decision making than he made through last season so it is very hopeful and promising that he is continuing his upward trend on on his decision making skills uh, like he did at the tail end of last year uh, i am fully waiting for the uh, nine paragraph pe- press release on uh that the game is slowing down for him <laughs> that will inevitably come with all up and coming rookies but uh you know it, it it'll eventually happen so so one more thing i know we're we're getting a little short on time here ryan i want to make sure that you get the floor at the end the blazers have announced that they are giving away collectible glassware. Do we all remember the early nineties dairy queen Dairy Queen's glasses? And then they came back with some in like the Nicola Batum, West Matthews, Robert some Lopez. of these. 
these babies right over here. Oh. Yeah, there you go. There they are. There they are. Um, and of course, uh, they, they've, they've brought them back at different times. You can get Donovan Klingon, Scooty Rudy, and Shaden Sharp, uh, the first 7,777 fans at three select games. Oh, Go my get God. Your glasses, people. No, just open it up for while supplies last at every freaking location. Come on, don't make it so gimmicky. I was actually going to touch on uh, uh, the reason that I won't be here next or next Monday because uh, oh, if yeah, yeah. if if you will allow it, I am going to throw up the uh, the donation line. But um, uh, I've I've made comments over the years of that I I have a very small familial unit. You know, um, I was an only child raised uh, by a single mom. Dad wasn't in the picture. Uh, my mom was then also adopted. Um, uh, and so I, I had a very small familial unit. Um, I ha- grew up having four cousins, the closest in age of which to me, was, or she was six years older. Uh, her closest sibling was eight years older than her. So me and me and my youngest cousin grew up being kind of very close in, in, you know, we were the ones banished to the kids table. Um, when my cousin was 18 years old, she kind of wanted to see the world. Me and my mom were living out here. She came and lived with us for about four or five years. Uh, I, I've always classified her as, you know, the sister I never had, you know, if you want to go for cliches, she was the one who, you know, bought me my first six pack of beer you know, smuggled me my first cigarette, all, all that kind of stuff. And, um, it was about a week and a half ago that she ended up getting into a car accident randomly. Um, Things were fine. She was fine until a couple days later, she started having these very weird symptoms, uh, ended up getting taken away in an ambulance, um, brought into the hospital. They did some tests. Uh, she ended up in the ICU and they couldn't explain why, uh, she got some blood work back and, uh, she was diagnosed with Wilson's disease, which is typically a disease that is, is diagnosed by people between the age of 12 and 23. It's when your body can't process copper. Uh, long story short, it ended up to her having absolute horrible test results that led to her getting a full liver transplant. So she did need a deceased person's liver. Uh, she just received that transplant here a couple of days ago. She's still currently recuperating in the ICU. Uh, I will be flying out to Minnesota to visit uh, my cousins and surprise my uh, my cousin Jill. Uh, hopefully on the day that she gets out of the ICU. Uh, Her chances of survival right now are about a little over 50%. Um, If she can get off dialysis and she get off intubation, uh, that's going to raise up to about 75%. But yeah, Um, I will uh, send Brandon the link so that uh, any sort of uh, GoFundMe or or, uh, donations can be sent to her. But um, this is going to be the world's most awkward transition just to close this out. But uh, you can follow us. Follow us at We yeah, Like no, the Blazers. No, no, no come on, on come you on. We don't need to do that. I just want to say prayers up uh, to your family, and we're thinking about you. The link will be there. We don't need to do the outro today. And I apologize for the the joke. I didn't know that you were going to talk about this. But uh, prayers up. Uh, we're thinking about you. We love you. Appreciate you all for listening. Thank you so much, and go Blazers. Go Blazers. Go Blazers.